Hello. My name is Dominic Butler, and I'm the lead game designer on Ghost Recon Wildlands. In Ghost Recon Wildlands, we offer players the total freedom of choice as they fight to take down the Santa Blanca cartel. A few months ago at E3, our four ghosts raided a camp to extract El Pozzolero, a buchon of the Santa Blanca cartel. Today, we want to show you another way to play the same mission, taking a stealth approach and using the cover of night to our advantage. Weaver, Nomad and Holt are base jumping from the helicopter. This is one of the 60 plus vehicles available in the game for you to use as you explore the world. Today, four devs are playing the demo in co-op. But Ghost Recon Wildlands is entirely playable from beginning to end in solo where you're supported by your AI teammates. Weaver has landed on a cliff nearby to gain a vantage point and provide cover for Nomad and Holt who are now landing and moving towards a cartel checkpoint. All four ghosts are now on the ground. Midas will regroup with the others in the camp. Ghost Recon Wildlands features a complete day and night cycle, as well as a realistic weather system, which both have an influence on gameplay. Here, for example, nighttime with rainy weather is a perfect combination for a stealthier approach. Ideally, we want to gain access without alerting the cartel, so it's time to be creative. The ghosts know that this truck is being used for local deliveries. If they can take it, they can use it to get into the camp without raising suspicion. Our ghosts are getting into position, now tagging their enemies and identifying their targets. Midas is now using the slingshot feature to assign targets to his teammates. The slingshot makes its comeback in Wildlands and is the perfect feature to coordinate your action with your team. Here we go. And that's a perfect execution. Playing solo, you'll be able to issue simple orders to your AI teammates to achieve the same deadly result. Now Nomad and Holt are going to use the truck to get into the camp without being detected. The cartel recognizes this truck and so the ghosts are in. Holt has jumped out of the truck and is preparing a possible exit strategy by placing some C4. Landmines, frag, flash and diversion grenades will also give you the explosive edge and help create diversions. With more than 50 weapons available in the game that you're able to use and customize with hundreds of different attachments, it's up to you to choose the right weapon for the job. Each of them has its own ballistics model with piercing, dispersion, and bullet drop. Weaver's now deploying his drone to further recon the area. He switched to thermal vision to easily detect local targets. Other special upgrades can be added to the drone too, including an EMP pulse that deactivates electronics, a noise generator, or high explosives. Okay, that's our guy. 
El Pozzolero working late into the night. Now that we have his exact location, Nomad is going to park the truck near to the target. In order to complete your mission, coordination and communication are key. Nomad is now in position, waiting for the right moment to grab the target. Midas is heading towards the camp to rejoin Holt and Nomad. Weaver has located the camp generator with his drone. If the team manages to shut it down, they'll kill power in the camp, which will prevent triggering alarms or secondary reinforcements. Midas is now making his way into the camp, avoiding the patrols en route to the generator. Holt is placing more C4 on the other side of the camp to provide further distraction in case the ghosts need it during their escape. The diversion grenade is another great tool that can be used to distract enemies. Since we're attacking this camp at night, we can take advantage of each NPC's unique day and night agenda. For example, this soldier here is taking a rest. Back to Midas, who's keeping a low profile to avoid being detected. Holt is making his way towards Nomad in El Pozzolero's location. Making sure you don't leave bodies to be discovered is key to preventing the camp going on full alert. You can grab and drag your enemies away from the patrol path, so when you knock them out, they're out of sight. Midas is climbing between the camp buildings to reach a better position. All the while, Weaver continues to provide cover. Having reached the generator, Midas can disable it to kill the lights throughout the camp. Nomad has activated his night vision to get closer to El Pozzolero. Now while enemies don't have night vision, they will become suspicious as to why the lights are suddenly out. Now, we need to extract our target from the camp. The enemies are now alerted by the noise and are trying to find its origin. Yeah. 
Holt is passing a rebel prison cage. The rebels are another faction in the game. They have their own conflict with the Santa Blanca, so they'll spontaneously engage whenever they get the chance. Nomad has just put our target into the truck and is moving towards the exit. Weaver is liberating another group of rebels. This camp is now erupting into a full gunfight between the rebels and the Santa Blanca. And to provide further disruption, we blow that C4 we placed earlier. Weaver is now headed to rejoin the others, clearing the last of the Santa Blanca in the wild who were attracted by the gunshots. So now with El Pozzolero in our custody, we're gonna deliver him to our rally point and learn key information about the cartel and his bosses. That's the end of the demo. I hope you enjoyed seeing our ghosts approaching this mission in stealth. Just one of the many ways you can play Ghost Recon Wildlands. And don't forget to check ghostrecon.com for the latest news and updates on the game.